Hey guys, Aaron here. Today we're going to be replacing the front rotors and pads on a Ford F-250 Super Duty two-wheel drive. Now these procedures and parts will be the same from years 2011 and up. And since this truck has over 150,000 miles, we're also going to be replacing the front wheel bearings, repacking them full of grease, and we're going to be replacing the front seal for this wheel bearing here. So before we begin, let's go over the parts and tools we're going to need to get the job done. All right, so we'll need a hammer, some needle nose pliers. We're going to need an inner and outer wheel bearing. We're going to need a wheel seal, 21 millimeter socket, 16 millimeter socket, an inch and a half socket for the spindle nut that holds the wheel bearings on. If you don't have one of these, you could just use some um, large channel locks. They work as well. We're going to need a half inch ratchet. We're also going to need an inch pound wrench. This is to set the correct preload on the spindle nut. Now again, if you don't have one, you can get the spindle nut close. I'll go ahead and include the instructions. Uh, we'll go over in a little bit. And we'll also need a C-clamp. I'm using this to compress the pistons in the calipers. If you have a normal piston compression tool, you could use that as well. So the first thing we need to do is get the front caliper um, and caliper mounting bracket off of the vehicle so we can go ahead and take off the rotor and replace the bearings. To do that, we're gonna remove the two five, um, eight or 16 millimeter bolts that hold the brake caliper on. And what I like to do is I like to get an impact on those bolts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the wheel to the right, which will give us a little bit more room for our impact gun. Go ahead and take your hand and pull on the caliper this way. This is gonna compress the two pistons slightly, which will aid in removing the caliper. It's gonna take about five or six seconds for that to occur. Go ahead and just set the caliper right up there, out of the way. If you wanna tie it to the coil, you, go, you can go ahead and do that. Now you can see these brake pads are very low. All right, next we need to take our 21 millimeter socket and remove the two caliper mounting bolts. One is up and one is down here. All right, now we can go ahead and take this cap off to expose the spindle nut to remove the wheel bearings. Uh, to remove this little cap, I like to go ahead and just take a flat blade screwdriver and a hammer and hit the back edge here. And if you hit it right, you could actually pop this cap off and it will be um, not damaged. There we have it. Next, we could take our needle nose pliers and remove the cotter pin that holds um, our little castle nut on here. We're gonna reuse that. Go ahead, just pull this off. Now here's your spindle nut here. Uh, generally, they're pretty loose, they're not on real tight. Um, so you could probably just remove it by hand. If not, you could take some channel locks and just loosen it up. Next, we need to remove the washer. Now we're free to go ahead and pull everything out as an assembly here. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and go to the bench where we can prep our new rotor for install. All right, so here we have our brand new rotor. It's important to note that for the 2011 up F250s, there are two available rotors for the two wheel drive models. Um, one of them is 13.5 inches in length and one of them is 14.25 inches in length. Uh, so when you go to you know, purchase your rotor, make sure you measure your rotors before you go to the store, or you could just check the links below for uh, the correct rotor for your application. So as you can see, I have the 14.25 rotors. Now we can go ahead and prep our new bearings to be installed. We're gonna be installing the inner bearing first, then we're gonna go ahead and press the seal into the hub. Now there's a couple different methods as far as putting grease and packing grease into bearings. I like to use the old-fashioned method of just using your hand. Take some uh, wheel bearing grease and just press the bearing into your hand. You basically just want to see 
uh, grease form inside this inner ring and you could actually see the grease being packed into the bearings. Soon as the grease is fully packed into the bearing and you can't see the inside bearing anymore, you know that the um, bearing's pretty much ready for install. All right, so the bearing looks pretty good. Before we throw her in, I'm just gonna lightly coat the race. And that's that. Now we're ready to install our seal. What I like to do is just take a light coat of grease and form it around the inner seal here. It's just gonna make installation a little bit easier. Now you can take a hammer and slowly tap all the way around and it'll press right in. Now it's time to go ahead and pack our outer bearing full of grease so we can install our new rotor onto the vehicle. Now we need to go ahead and put our washer on and our spindle nut. Now the correct method for tightening and torquing down this spindle nut is to take the spindle nut and take an inch pound wrench and torque it down to 21 inch pounds. And as soon as the inch pound wrench clicks, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, turn the rotor five times which is gonna properly seat the bearing. We're gonna back off the nut, and now we're gonna to torque it down to 18 inch pounds. And that's our proper torque. Now, if you don't have an inch pound wrench, basically 18 inch pounds is as is, is tight as you can get it with your hands. You don't wanna to put too much preload on these bearings, they'll get hot and fail prematurely. Next, let's go ahead and throw our dust cap back on. Now, before we go ahead and throw our new pads on, what I like to do is take out these uh, caliper slide bolts or slide pins and just put some new grease. It's always best to use some silicone based lubricant, um, maybe even like a uh, white lithium grease or something like that. Definitely has to be high temperature. Normal wheel bearing grease normally doesn't last as far as um, how hot these things can get. They'll tend, it'll tend to leak out and get onto the pad. So I'll go ahead and include a link in the description of a good grease that I recommend for lubricating these. Okay, next let's go ahead and throw on our new brake pads. Now the last step before we throw our caliper on is we need to compress the pistons that are inside the caliper. I like to take an old brake pad and a large C-clamp. These work really well for comp um, compressing these big pistons. If you don't have one of these, I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description of where you can purchase one. Last step, let's go ahead and throw our caliper mounting bolts back in. Alright, so the last step is going to be to throw the wheel back on, lower the vehicle, and take it for a test drive. But before we do,
we need to go ahead and depress the brake, brake pedal about four or five times to make sure the brake pedal is nice and firm and that the pads are going to be on contact with the piston and the caliper and there's no slack in between. So hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave something in the comment section. Thanks for watching as always, guys. See you next time.